So today's class uh, is uh, introductory class. We'll talk uh, about the class itself uh, and uh, about the program of the class. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, Jake will talk a little bit about the uh, uh, financial uh, financial terms uh, and uh, uh, and ideas, and I'll talk uh, about bond mass a little bit. So the the class is because it is uh, organized uh, to introduce you uh, to uh, to the. Uh, applications of, uh, of mass in the real world, uh, the class is split between a mathematical part, uh, which will be taught by, by Peter, and uh, application part, uh, which will be taught by many people uh, who come from industry. Uh, maybe start with a little bit of introduction of myself uh, and how it is all comes together. So uh, I... Uh, I was at MIT a long time ago. I got my PhD uh, uh, from math department in uh, 92. Uh, my advisor was Gil Strang. Uh, and uh, my uh, topic of my uh, PhD was, has nothing, had nothing to do with, with finance. It was actually applications where, it was about wavelets uh, and applications were in signal processing. So after that, I was a math professor for, for a few years uh, and did math research. Uh, but at some point, I decided to, to switch to, uh, to the industry. And um, somehow, I did uh, like mathematical finance. So since then, I've been a quant working in, uh, in mathematical finance, uh, worked in, in many, many places. For a long time, I was with Morgan Stanley, and right now I, I run uh, fixed income quants at RBC. Uh, so uh, the uh, and and uh, my history is definitely I, I very much uh, appreciate uh, having experience both with academia and 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 with industry, and that's what. Uh, what I would like to uh, to show and uh, to show you through through the class. So now a, a little bit more about the class. Uh, so uh, as I said, there will be mass part and uh, there will be finance part. The the uh, lectures will be intertwined, not necessarily one uh, after another, but uh, but more or less uh, 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 in equal proportion. Uh, the um, in terms of prerequisites, uh, I do think that you all have uh, necessary mathematical prerequisites, which is uh, linear algebra, uh, some statistics, uh, and some uh, probably some uh, calculus and, and mathematical analysis. Uh, we don't require any prior knowledge uh, of finance, uh, even though uh, if you have been doing uh, uh, some uh, some work or internships before uh, that that certainly helps. Here is uh, the schedule uh, which we intend to to keep. And please keep in mind that things may change and may shift, uh, uh, particularly with uh, with invited speakers. Uh, Peter will talk uh, about the mathematical uh, part uh, here, but I'll just introduce. Uh, the uh, a few classes. So in a week's time, uh, Jeff Shen from uh, from BlackRock uh, will talk about uh, equity investing, in particular uh, quantitative equity investing. Uh, then uh, Stefan Andreev uh, from Two Sigma will talk about principal component analysis uh, and finance, which should go well together with uh, uh, with what Peter will be talking about at, at the time. Uh, then uh, Andrew Gunstensen from Mizuho uh, will will talk uh, about uh, linear rates, products, swaps, bonds, and curve construction. Um, then James Shepard from Quantel Technologies, which is now part of uh, London Stock Exchange, will talk about optimization uh, and compressing uh, compressing derivative portfolios. Uh, then a uh, very interesting uh, lecture uh, by uh, Tarek Mansour uh, and, and, and uh, uh, Luna 
Lopez from Calci. Uh, they'll talk about their company and how they started. Uh, they all, uh, they both are uh, MIT alums uh, and actually uh, alums from the class from a few years ago. Uh, then um, uh, Ross Guerin from Millennium uh, will talk uh, uh, about uh, investments uh, in systematic investments. Uh, Andrew Law uh, from MIT will talk actually about applying uh, some techniques of, from computational finance into uh, uh, biomedicine and biomedical portfolio. Uh, 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 oh, I, I missed uh, both Jake and myself uh, there but Jake will talk about, <laughs> about portfolio optimization I'll, and I'll talk about uh, Black Scholes. And, and the last invited lecture will be uh, by John Hull, uh, who is uh, legendary in derivative space, but he will actually talk uh, uh, about machine, uh, machine learning, his newest interest. Uh, with that, let me pass it on okay. to Peter. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Let's see, let me just page back up to the schedule of lectures. Um, although before that, let me give a brief self-introduction. I have a PhD degree in statistics, and this was a mathematical statistics program at UC Berkeley. And I was getting rather uh, distracted with mathematical uh, arguments and analysis and took a class at the business school at Berkeley, the Haas School. And that renewed my uh, passion, basically, for studying finance and quantitative finance. Um, I taught in the statistics department at Harvard and then joined the Sloan School, where I pursued research on financial statistical modeling and finance. Uh, that led to interesting consulting projects where one client uh, hired, well, wanted to hire me to work on a trading program in international equities, and we ended up agreeing on becoming partners rather than deciding how much I should get paid for that. And so I worked uh, with hedge funds uh, for a number of years, um, ultimately had the great pleasure of uh, working for ICOS, a uh, hedge fund in Cyprus, which is in the eastern uh, Mediterranean. Um, following that, uh, I came back to academics, actually to help with this course, uh, now, what, 11 years ago or 12 years ago, and had the great pleasure to work with Vasily and Jake on this class. And what I think is really important to highlight is how the mathematics lectures are teaching you mathematics that's really quite practical and useful. So um, I like, I, I love mathematics, but I love, I guess, financial uh, applications even more. And so we'll be stressing those tools that are useful uh, in financial modeling. Um, I, I do think it's important to emphasize the stature of many of these guest lectures. Uh, and you're really going to be hearing from uh, people who are the top in the field, like John Hull. Many of you probably are familiar with his work, uh, and Andrew Lowe. Um, and uh, actually, I had the pleasure of teaching uh, Tarek and Luana uh, in statistics classes, one of which was this. And uh, what they've done is created a new futures exchange, which is rather impressive. Um, when you look at the history of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, there may be, I don't know, 50 or so futures exchanges that have come and gone. Uh, maybe the most important is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. But here were two students who uh, basically created an exchange where you bet on discrete events, whether things will or will not occur. And uh, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, to have them join the class. Well, um, let's see, with the different statistics or math lectures, you can see the range of topics. Um, and these are all uh, lectures that introduce you 
to these topics without much background. So I think it provides an excellent introduction to, to the different topics. Um, we will also be using uh, the language R in our studio for illustrations. And I think most students here probably are Python experts. I am not a Python expert, <laughs> so I use R. But let me uh, just tab over to a slide showing this. Let's see, with using R, one of the reasons for using R is that it gives you immediate access to state-of-the-art statistical methods that get developed. And, but in addition to that, it facilitates the downloading and collection of financial data from the internet or from other sources that you might have access to. Uh, but one can see issues like nonlinear volatility models, regime modeling, those are uh, packages that uh, are quite useful and powerful. Um, in terms of sources of financial data, everyone, I'm sure, looks at uh, the financial markets a bit. And any data that's available on Yahoo is importable into R. Also, the Federal Reserve Economic Database has all, well, around 80 thousand different time series of different rates. So um, let's see, we distributed in the Canvas site this R notebook, FM Intro 1, which basically uses um, the R Studio cloud to uh, collect data and display it. And so this year, um, we have an alternative to asking students to install our desktop on their machines, but just to sign up to this uh, RStudio cloud, and you can basically, with a simple login, create a simple files, which we give you, and display different uh, time series. So this, um, <clears throat> this FM Intro 1 uh, R program basically will dis collect and display data. And you don't need to know anything except to maybe update the dates for starting and ending data collection. And so one can look at the S&P 500 index, the VIX index, uh, perhaps one of the more important indexes in uh, equity markets is the VIX index, sort of a fear gauge. And uh, it turns out that the sort of fear gauge tends to spike when the market drops. And so there are interesting uh, relationships between these that actually get formalized with option pricing theory. And let's see, just for interest, there's here's the time series for Bitcoin. Um, the beginning of this time series is about when our class began. And if you were fortunate to be uh, at MIT at that time, uh, an alum of MIT gave all the incoming students, I think $100 in Bitcoin. And uh, many years later, some of them still had their Bitcoin keys and could cash in. Some uh, were very regretful that they somehow lost their, their Bitcoin keys. But it's really an interesting market. Um, I, I was a complete skeptic back here. <laughs> uh, and I guess I'm still a complete skeptic. But uh, that being said, you know, there's obviously great potential there. Um, here's the time series graph of NVIDIA. Um, curiously, in last year's notes, we displayed NVIDIA. And since then, <laughs> it's risen rather dramatically. Um, a really interesting topic for analysis is the uh, creation of bubbles in financial markets. And can you detect a bubble and when it might, uh, might burst? Very challenging. Um, let's see, one last uh, point to uh, illustrate was the crude oil futures contract. Um, it's one of the more popular futures contracts traded 
Um, and what's rather striking is that in 2020, the price of this contract went negative significantly. And this was an event that the brokers, important brokers, didn't program in that possibility into their systems. And so uh, when the system sort of became updated on this day when the price was significantly negative, um, those who held, say, thousands of contracts of the contract actually uh, owed money <laughs> to the exchange for their negative position. Um, anyway, the financial markets offer these cases where surprising, seemingly impossible events can occur, such as negative interest rates. When I was studying finance, uh, the thought of negative interest rates was, uh, was just considered um, an impossibility. So um, with that, um, let's see. I just want to highlight this. Uh, our, uh, our studio uh, cloud um, allows you just to log in with just a username and password, and it's free. And then you can create our programs, and it should display the RStudio running from the cloud. And so here is a directory in this cloud project, which has an RMD for our markdown file, which is displayed in the top left. And that simple program runs, creates that HTML file. So analyses are very easy to illustrate with our studio. And we, I hope to uh, share with you various R programs that you can use to replicate studies we do in our lectures. All right, um, let's see, finally, uh, let's see, we <laughs> distributed assignment zero today, which is asking everyone to fill out a simple survey of where you come from, what your interests are, and to submit perhaps a resume or CV if you have that accessible so we can get to know all of you.